Yo, what is going on YouTube? I am Germ here, as you guys can see up on the screen behind me. Today we're going to be talking about Team Liquid. We're actually going to be talking mostly about the guy who is blacked out. He gave a recent interview um, talking about just kind of what it means to be uh, on this Team Liquid roster, uh, kind of looking back on his career and maybe looking forward to the future a little bit as well. Uh, we're going to be going over that video today, giving my thoughts and opinions on all the big important quotes and the stuff that stuck out to me, because um, I did think it was pretty interesting. Uh, team Liquid is a team that, again, coming into the season had a ton of hype especially after they uh looked as good as they did during the lcs lock-in tournament being able to take down the championship uh and they're obviously a huge exciting team with a ton of stars uh an insane insane fan base they've been uh one of the best lcs teams the last couple of years they've been absolutely insane uh but they've started off the season a little bit slow so there's even more and talk about to talk about with this team you know just how good exactly are they what does the future look like for them uh and how do we kind of project them going forward maybe even into international events we're gonna be talking about all of that and much more in today's video but before we get into that i just want to mention real quick if you guys have not already please take a second real quick i'll wait for you to smash the like button i would appreciate it so so much it really helps me out the youtube algorithm helping uh, just my content grow spread to more people that would be absolutely awesome it's one of the best ways easiest ways to help support my content if that's something that you're interested in doing also subscribe if you have not already to stay up to date on all my latest content we have a ton of videos coming out in the near near future uh, and you don't want to miss out on any of that you know we are really uh in my opinion one of the best resources on youtube for league of legends content with that being said let's get right into this let's check out this interview from santorin this interview comes from dexerto and the title being santorin on liquid world's 2021 hopes this is the best chance i'll ever have and that is obviously a hard-hitting quote to start this off we got ads all over this page i have ad block and still there's so many ads i i don't know whatever you know they got to get paid too but it's just crazy that like uh, the whole screen is ads <laughs> lucas santor and larson proved his doubters wrong in 2020 you know this is absolutely awesome yes he came off a huge year of flyquest they made it to back-to-back -back championships uh they didn't make it out of groups at worlds but they were you know for all intents and purposes possibly the second best team in the lcs uh last year maybe uh tsm team look and maybe you maybe you have uh flyquest as third but they were great and santorin kind of set himself apart as perhaps the best jungler in the lcs yes there's a case for blabber um you know there's a case i know some people like close or some people like speak up but santorin uh was the top of most people's list heading into the 2021 season and that's obviously uh his performances last year on flyquest landed him uh on this team liquid team this is a star-studded team who is trying to win right now who's trying to win this year uh and his performances last year definitely landed him on this team and that was super super exciting for him uh when they look back on his career uh he was on tsm in 2015 on teams that made it to worlds teams that won lcs titles um and it's crazy and now he's back uh, a long journey over the, the last six years to finally get back to like a championship you know quality team yes FlyQuest was championship quality but obviously they were not able to take down uh you know an lcs title last season but you know now he's coming into a team this year where he, he looks to be a favorite um, so he talks about how this was the best team he's ever been on. And on, like they say on paper, that statement does make sense. Um, Liquid was the NA's best team last year, and they probably upgraded in two positions in top lane and in the jungle in this off season. Uh, I would agree with that. Yes. Impact is looking pretty good to start the season. So if you don't think how far he's necessarily an upgrade over impact, I mean, that's fine. They're both very, very great top laners. Um, but uh, I think most people would say that Santorin is an upgrade over Broxa, especially, uh, the Broxa that we saw in 2020, which was not anything close to like 2018 Fnatic Broxa where he was really at kind of the height and the peak of his career um, but yeah he he does believe that he has grown as a player obviously over the last couple of years uh, which is completely normal I mean 2015 six years ago so much has changed uh, he says the reason that he's saying this is because back in in 2015 on TSM he thinks that roster was really really good and it definitely was obviously you know any team with Bjergsen on it is going to be tough um, I believe that was like a Dyrus Wild Turtle team as well I can't remember who the support was if that was like a lust boy year uh, or what was going on but it was definitely a very very talented tsm team uh especially with bjergsen on it uh but he puts himself as a big issue on that roster now he feels now he feels like he's actually ready to be on a roster of that caliber obviously a ton of things have changed um let's see yeah i was right that is a roster dyrus wild turtle and lust boy awesome um so what he says really stands out to him about this team liquid team this year is that they can play for any lane and i do agree with that to an extent but i get why people have their uh concerns also like yes alfari has been amazing so far he's like a csd monster he looks like an insane laner team liquid has maybe struggled a little bit uh to capitalize on those leads and do anything with them but you know a uh, very very solid top laner in the mid lane they have jensen who now that bjergsen's gone 
might just be the best uh, mid laner in North America. Uh, he's been experienced. He's had uh, insane performances before. He's won titles in the LCS. He's made it to the semifinals at Worlds. He has an awesome resume. Uh, and then obviously that bot lane of Core JJ and Tactical uh, has, a, has an argument to be the best bot lane in the LCS. I don't think they've been the best bot lane in the LCS to start the year so far. Uh, but again, we're just six games in. We got about uh, two thirds left of the season. But then on the flip side of everything, there is arguments coming the other way uh, that each lane kind of has, you know, maybe some question marks too. Alfari, uh, he has insane laning stats, but you know, he's coming off uh, a year in Europe where he was on the last place team in the LEC. So, you know, not necessarily him dominating lane isn't always turning into wins. Maybe there's some question marks about can he actually turn his leads into like game winning plays for his team. Uh, Jensen, there's always concerns about his consistency. He, he has high highs, but uh, sometimes he doesn't show up in the biggest moment. Sometimes he doesn't show up internationally. Sometimes he randomly has off games or, or goes through kind of lulls in the split and stuff. Uh, and then in the bot lane, and obviously tactical very very young player he's going through like some burnout issues and stuff like that he's been saying um so while yes they can play, play through every lane when they're all playing their best uh each lane also yeah, has a little bit of a question mark for me too but i guess that's just being a north american team you know we're not uh unbeatable or the perfect team or anything like that um but he does talk about having uh, people who are usually going to be winning their laning phases. So it makes life really, really easy on top of having good team fighting and overall a really, really well-rounded team. And overall, I would agree with everything Santorin is saying. Uh, I've said in the past that I think this Team Liquid team does have a chance to be, uh, up until this point, the best roster in North American history. I, I have that as the 2016 uh, summer TSM team at the moment. But uh, on paper, I think this team could be great. Now that 2016 TSM team is going to be hard uh, to pass up because, man, that team was so, so talented. Just look at the players on that roster, uh, Bjergsen and Doublelift. I mean, that is absolutely insane. Um, Biofrost obviously was a rookie, but Sven Skarin has been a beast as well. Haunter up in the top lane. I mean, I mean that, is, that was a great, great team. But this Team Liquid team has so much talent. They could be better than that uh they have to prove it and so far so good they won the lock-in tournament if they can continue to do these things they can be awesome uh but they at least have that talent on paper um and again he talks about how uh you know two years ago it'd be easy to look back on St. Torrance time at tsm uh and claim that that was the peak of his career you know he was in challenger series uh i can't remember like gold coin esports or something like that he was playing on um where they were kind of struggling to even win games in the, in the challenger series they weren't really able to make it back to the lcs ever uh, but then finally FlyQuest took a chance on him obviously he made the most of that opportunity uh and really really ran with it uh and then he had that interview where they made the top four he was like crying you know that emotional interview where i mean it had to just be a big relief a big weight on his shoulders just kind of like a I was grinding for so long. I had that high in my career. I went through the lows uh, and I made it back. I made it back up to the top. Uh, and that had to be a really, really awesome moment for him. Uh, and again, coming from the 2015 TSM team where he maybe felt like he didn't belong to then dropping off the face of the earth into the Challenger Series and then really probably feeling like he didn't belong in the LCS to make it all the way back uh, and become a player that he is finally confident in himself in his abilities and everything is absolutely awesome. And I do love Santorin's story. Uh, it is a really, really awesome redemption story. But in the end, uh, to talk about uh the quote where uh he's talking about this being uh the best team he's ever played on the best chance he has to make it out of groups and how it'll be kind of like a disappointment if this team doesn't um he said, if Santorin can't make it at Worlds with this roster, it will likely be the mark of uh, end of his path for the Summoner's Cup. However, there's always a little bit of hope that he'll never die. He thinks this iteration, if we don't make it further than groups, I don't think I'll find a roster where we will. I feel really confident in the four guys I'm playing with and my coaching staff that this will be the best chance I ever have. I'm looking forward to do everything I can to make this happen this time around because this is the final push for me. Now, in some ways, that might sound a little bit to me like you know if things don't work out this year uh that he could think about retiring soon which is actually interesting because he did just sign a one year deal with team liquid so if if they do fail or even you know say they did win worlds or whatever is this gonna be it for santorin is he gonna be done i i don't know that is that is a, a fair amount of speculation i guess but that's kind of what it sounds like for me saying this is the final push um but just as far as just probably being the best roster he's ever going to play on you know I, I would probably agree if he does fail with this team if they don't if they don't even make it out of groups at worlds uh you know again he's on a one-year deal so team liquid would probably be looking to move on from him at that point uh he probably won't ever find a team as good as this and that's crazy to sound and you know the future is wild you never know exactly what's going to happen or where he winds up but if he looks if he is the best jungler in north america this year then there should be another opportunity for him it's going to open up other doors but uh 
you know, it, it's hard to say uh, that we're going to see a team more talented than this with Santorin on it in the near future because there's just so many moving parts. It's hard to get a, a team much better than this one in North America, especially right now um, with everything going on. But we'll see how that goes. So, uh, I mean, I just thought this was really, really interesting. And the other big thing is that he's saying that this is his best chance to ever do it at Worlds uh, to ever, you know, make it out of groups, to make a deep run at Worlds and everything. And right now, Team Liquid is currently 3-3, three and three, and they are tied for 5th place in the LCS, you know, like that 5th, 6th slot. So, uh, I mean, that's just kind of funny. I mean, the memes kind of write themselves where right now they're on the outside looking in as far as like going to MSI, going to Worlds, anything like that. Uh, yes, it is just week two. I expect TL to turn it around. I expect them to still be the best team in the LCS. I would still, even to this point, would say they're the favorites to win the title. Yes, Cloud9 is making a good case. 100 Thieves making a good case. Evil Geniuses is there. TSM, Dig, they're maybe looking solid. Um, but once we get to best and fives and stuff, I, I think Team Liquid is going to be the best. But Cloud9 is great too. 100 Thieves is great too. All these teams are going to have a shot. But I, I would very be very, very surprised if Team Liquid isn't in the top three, you know, making its worlds at the end. So really, they'll have a shot, as much of a shot as anyone else in the end. But uh, it's just funny at this time uh, when you're sitting at three and three and you're struggling to, to win games in the LCS to say that, uh, you, you know, to be talking about worlds or talking about doing well in worlds when you think to do well in worlds, you kind of have to dominate North America because do North America obviously has not been that great at worlds recently. Uh, last couple of years failing to even have a team make it out of groups. So you might want to start with that. You know, I can hear some people saying that as well, but uh, it's a long season. They have a ton of time to turn things around. I, I definitely am confident they'll be able to do so. Uh, as far as what's going on this weekend, uh, on Friday, they're playing against Golden Guardians. Uh, on Saturday, they're playing against Evil Geniuses. I can't remember who they're playing against on Sunday. I want to say it might be Cloud9. Uh, I don't know why Google doesn't have their schedule schedule in but i think we checked that out on lol esports yesterday um so tough matches up ahead uh you know they're sitting at three and three right now and with matches against evil geniuses and cloud nine this weekend uh, if those games don't go their way they're on they're then going to find themselves in a really really awkward kind of tough position fighting uphill the rest of the split so hopefully they can figure some things out hopefully they deal with all the issues they got uh because like santorin said this might be a lot of these people's uh, best chance ever to have a deep run at worlds in my opinion it's north america's best chance uh that we've seen in the last couple of years uh, so as a North American fan, I'm rooting for them. I hope they're able to get it done, but we'll see. It's going to be a really interesting story to follow over the course of the season. That is pretty much it for this video today, guys. Definitely drop a like if you enjoyed it. Leave a comment down below. What do you think? Do you agree with Santorin that this is his best shot ever to make a deep run at Worlds? Uh, or do you think TSM in 2015 was better? Or do you think he'll find a better team in the future? I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts and opinions on anything we talked about in today's video. Subscribe to save down on the latest content. Hopefully I catch you guys in the next one. But until then, peace!